Ray Moda, and welcome to another edition of The Hot Seat. Recently, Juniper had an update regarding the Q Fabric, and as we do in the Hot Seat, is we gather questions from a lot of these service providers, and in this case, a bunch of enterprise and some equity folks, and try to address deeper dive type questions. Joining us today is Mike Marcellin, who's Vice President of Marketing for Juniper Networks. Mike, thanks, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Ray. Good to be here. Appreciate it. Now, why don't we just set the stage a little bit, Mike? I mean, when you look at the data center market, it's an established market. There's a lot of vendors that play in this particular space. Why do you think you can have an impact, and what was the motivation behind that? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and so, you know, Juniper's philosophy has always been to, you know, look at opportunities to, you know, better serve our customers, to think architecturally, and to help them at the end of the day run their businesses better. And so as we looked at the data center market, you know, over the past many years, there have been uh, significant advances in, you know, server technology, virtualization, storage has become more accessible and virtual. But really, the one area that hadn't changed and, and was really in need of change was the network inside the data center. And in fact, you know, the, the incumbents that had been there really didn't have a big incentive to drive innovation and to drive change. So as we looked at that and, and you know, we looked at where applications are going, cl you know, clouds being built both within enterprise and service provider, all, all, the, all the folks that we work with every day, it was a natural place for us to you know, bring our innovation agenda to. Uh, and so, you know, that's what we've done. And, and actually, really, over the past few years, um, we've got we've got tremendous strength in, in securing data centers. You know, which we have through our SRX line. The EX uh, portfolio has been a really growing product line for us, uh, and a lot of that has come from data centers. And now, Q Fabric, uh, which is which is a great product for us to really transform how data centers are how the network within the data centers are built. Okay, good. Now, there's been a lot of talk regarding the availability. We've seen this whole roadmap of Stratus. <laughs> Uh, is the product available? Has there been recognized revenue on this product? Yeah. So you mentioned you know Project Stratus. So you know as I said when we when we identified you know the, the need for, for change in the data center, we announced a, 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 a an R and D project that we were embarking on uh, a couple of years ago called Project Stratus, mm -hmm. uh, and um, that was back in two thousand and nine. And then two thousand and ten, we started to talk about how we see um, data centers evolving, and that's where we started talking about three two one, where we mm -hmm. are you know simplifying data centers from the traditional three tier architecture to two tier. And then eventually to one tier, uh, and then this year uh, with the announcement of Q Fabric, um, we, we've delivered that that first tier or that one tier architecture. And so, um, so yes, Q Fabric uh, is available today. Mm -hmm. It's shipping today. Mm -hmm. We've got customers um, that uh, that have purchased Q Fabric, um, as well as a, a component of Q Fabric, which is the QFX thirty five hundred, which mm -hmm. is both a top of rack switch as well as the on ramp to the full Q Fabric architecture. So it is it is shipping today, and um, you know because it's such a transformation. You know, most most of our opportunities are going to take some time to really uh, sit down with customers and architects. So we don't expect it to be a huge revenue generator in 2011. Although we mm -hmm. have had some some early uh, successes, right. um, but but definitely as we go into 2012, we're hoping that's going to ramp nicely. Good. Now, if we could take a step back for those who aren't as familiar with the Q Fabric architecture, could you just give us? A quick summary on how the architecture works. Sure. The Q Fabric. Sure. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, I talked about the three two one architecture, and so fundamentally, if you think of Q Fabric as one single logical switch, so just like you buy a switch, you know, from from anyone, mm -hmm. um, the difference is the level of scale and performance that we can get, and the way that we've done that is is via an entirely new architecture that uh, really distributes the functions of the switch through multiple physical devices. But they all act as a single logical device. So think about what that then gives you. That that means that um, the level of scale that you can get, but also you know the ability to just manage that as a single device. So you know as you're managing data centers and building out data centers, people are worried about the capital that they invest, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got a good story to tell there. But they're also worried about the opex and just managing mm -hmm. these data centers. And so you know if, if you look at the comparisons to traditional architectures um, where you have to manage you know sometimes hundreds of devices. To managing just a single device, there's a huge benefit there. Mm -hmm. So, um, so really, the elegance of the architecture is a single logical device mm -hmm. has pure any-to-any -any connectivity, um, has incredibly low latency. So, the latency from one end of Q Fabric to the other is under five microseconds. Okay. That is less than any single chassis switch that's ever been built. Right. That can't scale to nearly what Q Fabric can. So, so, so the, so the. The, the paradigm that we changed is pretty pretty phenomenal. Right. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, because I just want to review that. 
the first part is you have a centralized control plane, mm -hmm. right? And then you have some directors connected to that. And then there's these layers of nodes that have standard Ethernet connection, right? Right. But I think the concern that I hear from some folks that I think we need some clarification is that middle part of it, where there's the packet forwarding device, mm -hmm. it's this interconnect. And there's a lot of clarifications that need to be addressed regarding the proprietary nature of connecting those nodes. How would you address that to some of the audience out there? Okay, yeah, I, th I think it's probably best addressed maybe in two ways. Mm -hmm. The first way is, is just to think of it as, as a single switch. Uh, again, a very massively scalable switch, but a single switch nonetheless. And so, as you referenced, you know, we within QFabric have, have the same components that you'd have in a single switch. So you have your, your line cards, quote unquote, you have your, 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 your backplane, um, you know, you have your routing, you know, your, your, your uh, routing engine. And so you have those components, we built them in, in a distributed manner. So just like you'd have with any single switch, you have standard interfaces to connect that single switch to um, any other element in the data center. So from that perspective, it's no different than any other switch. I think what's tripping people up or, or troubling people is that Q Fabric is such a quantum leap in performance and capability that in, in reality, in practice, you're not talking about a single switch, you're talking about an entire data center infrastructure. Right. Because you can't, you can't generally scale a single switch to be the, the you know, infrastructure for an entire data center, but you can do that with Q Fabric over 6,000 ports. Right. And so people are saying, well, you know, if that's going to be my entire data center and I'm getting it from one vendor, is that a concern? Right. Um, because if you think about a, a question of proprietary or vendor lock-in, it really goes back to, you know, if I buy this today, is something better going to come right. along tomorrow, right. Exactly. right? I mean, that's the bottom line. I mean, you don't mind right. buying something if you believe that it's, it's meeting your needs today and, and has a good, you know, shelf life shelf for the life, future, right? right? The iPad, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, an iPad. I mean, you buy an iPad and right. you're, you're fully aware that that's going to mean you get your apps from Apple and you buy your power cords from right. Apple, um, but it's a great device and right. so you do that. Um, and so, you know, uh, maybe I'll give a plug for, for the TCO study that you mm -hmm. guys did. And if you mm -hmm. look at the levels of performance that can be delivered with QFabric, I mean, it is, it's not just slightly better. Right. I mean, these, this is, a, a, I would say, at least a generation, if not two generations ahead of what anyone else is doing today. Right. It's 60 to 70% better TCO. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, 70% better power efficiency. Mm -hmm. The latency numbers are, are, you know, tremendously beyond what anything else that's out there today. So then the question you have to ask yourself is, can this be my data center mm -hmm. for the next five years, for the next seven years? Right. And, and I would say that not only have we built it to be, you know, scale and future-proof um, against the cloud requirements that we hear from customers over the coming years, but we'll continue to innovate on top of that. So I think from that perspective, you know, I think people need to think about it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, what are you afraid of? Are you afraid of taking on 60 or 70% better TCO? All right. So I think that's, that's really the reality. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense from, from that uh, aspect when you compare it to some other technologies out there. Uh, now, with this interconnect, it's a hardware component. I mean, uh, how do you address the potentials of a vendor locking if you hear that as a response from some of your customers. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think it goes back to the same thing. I mean, mm -hmm. just as you wouldn't expect a single switch to, you know, a, a given vendor switch to be interoperable with another vendor's line cards. I mean, within the body of the device, mm -hmm. in our case, it's a massively scalable device, but within that body of the device, you have components that, that Juniper has built and they work uh, right. with Juniper. And so, again, the question is, is does, does that have the capability to be your data center for the right. future? Now, the other thing I think I'll, I'll, I'll mention, though, is, you know, when we, when we were looking at this problem, we, mm -hmm. as we often do at Juniper, really thought about, okay, what's the, what's the toughest problem to solve? What's the most complex problem that needs solving? And that's what we've done with QFabric. And so we've solved a problem for very large, um, high-performance data centers. Mm -hmm. um, what you'll see from us coming over, over, over the coming months is, you know, a use case for QFabric that scales down. Okay. And so, again, when you think about lock-in, you're thinking, well, you know, am I, am I going to be paying for this thing that, you know, it is, a, is a level of scale that maybe is beyond what I need today? Maybe I will need it tomorrow, but it's beyond what I need today. Okay. And so we can help that by bringing it down. And so you're not making such a big purchase if that's not what you need today. Right. And so we'll have, you know, different, different variants of QFabric that scale down to, you know, even, you know, much smaller data centers than what we're, what we're optimizing for today. Good. Well, we didn't come to blows, but thanks. I appreciate you <laughs> thanks, taking Ray. the time appreciate the and time. addressing these hard-nosed questions. With Mike Marcellin on Ray Moda, thanks for joining us for this edition of The Hot Seat.